I had myself a bit of fun with an earthquake predictor last night. Now, these people tend not to like to play. So if you point out that the predictions fail and their prophecies are wrong, then they like to block you and move on. And that's fine. I have no issue with that. You know, nobody is obliged to interact with me. And if they don't want to, they can block me and move on. That's perfectly fine by me. But it's always nice to find somebody who does like to play, and this guy did like to play, so he responded. When I pointed out that his prediction for the 25th of September had failed, he came back saying, what about the earthquake that did happen on the 26th of December? Well, first of all, it's not the predicted date, and if you start casting your net wider, then you need to start looking at the actual probabilities of what you are predicting here. He cast the net wider at least one day to the left and to the right of his predicted date, and the earthquake that he pointed at as being somehow a validation of his prophecy was a magnitude 6.4, and I pointed out to him that there are about 134 of those every year, so when you start looking at the probability of that magnitude of an earthquake happening in that sort of bracket around the date that you're predicting, now he's looking at a probability of his prediction coming true of over 80%. Now, I don't know what you'd call that, but I just call that kind of playing the odds cleverly. I don't call that psychic in any way. But this guy, when I pointed this out to him, came back to me and says like, how about I make this real for you? I'm going to predict that in Tonight's lottery, in your location, the number 17 will come up. Hmm, that sounds a little bit more specific, does it? But, again, the odds of this happening aren't really that bad, are they? The chance that you don't pull the number 17 out of the bag on the seven balls that are being pulled out of the, the bag or the tombola or whatever it is, are pretty good. There's 45 balls in the Irish lottery, and the chance that the first one isn't number 17 is 44 over 45. The chance that the second one isn't number 17 is then 43 over the remaining 44. You need to multiply them with each other, so that 44 that's in the um, top there on the first drawer is in the bottom of the second drawer, so they cancel each other out, and if you multiply them all together, all you're left is with the 45 at the bottom of the first drawer and the 38 at the top of the last drawer. So the chances of not pulling the bag, number 17 out of the bag are 38 over 45. Now, they're good chances. This. It's an 84% chance, roughly, that you're not going to pull the number 17 out of the bag. So the odds he presented there, the, the actual prediction he presented there, was not the most likely thing to happen that night. But on the other hand, he did give himself a 16% chance of getting it right. So what he was obviously hoping for is that it would happen, and the chances aren't negligible, and that, that, that as a result of that, I would be duly impressed. As the case was, it didn't happen. So I wouldn't have been impressed in either case, but it didn't happen. The numbers didn't show up in the lottery, and that's what a chance of a, pro a probability of 84% against you does. Now, he could have cast the net a little bit wider, and he might do if he actually looks up the Irish lottery numbers and sees that the number 17 did show up in what's called Lotto Plus, which is one of the two extra draws that they do on the Saturday night, in which you can rather than winning the big jackpot in the actual lottery, you can, bin, you can win a sort of smaller little jackpot of 250,000 or 100,000, or I don't know exactly what, I never play that. But they are two extra little lottery draws that you can uh, play in. But then, of course, we need to adjust our probabilities as well, because in the Lotto Plus 1, it did show up, number 17 did show up last night. But again, we need to look at the probability stand, and if the chances of not pulling number 17 out of the out of the seven balls on one lottery line is 84%, then the chances of it not being pulled out on all three of the lines are 84% to the power of three. 
Now you're talking about a probability of about 60%. So the chances that it is going to be pulled out on any one of the three lines are almost 50-50. Again, not very impressive odds. And if it then does happen, that doesn't prove anything. It doesn't show any psychic ability or anything like that. So, again, I said to him, listen, these odds are not very impressive. Can you not um, predict something that is highly unlikely? Then I might be impressed. And he came back with something interesting. He actually came back with an interesting prediction. He said to me that before 10 p.m. that evening, I would see somebody trip. Now, first of all, rest assured, I didn't. But it got me thinking. I was thinking, why did this guy predict specifically that? Now, I don't believe in psychic phenomena. So this guy must have fancy, fancied his odds with that particular prediction. Now, why would somebody fancy their odds saying to somebody that tonight, before 10 p.m., you will see somebody trip? In normal circumstances, that is not a very likely thing to happen. It's, a ve it's quite an unlikely thing to happen. But then I thought, well, hang on a second. This guy might have had a quick look at my channel, a very quick, cursory look at my channel. I might have picked up one particular thing about me, that I'm an atheist. And he might have jumped to certain conclusions. He might have jumped to the conclusions, well, this is a young guy who is an atheist, who isn't particularly burdened by moral cramps about things like that. So I bet you I can see his little, the gears in his little tiny little pea brain going. I bet you he's one of these people who goes out on a Saturday night, goes out on the tear, goes on pub crawls and all that sort of thing. So that's the sort of picture he might have drawn in his mind. Now, of course, he's wrong on a number of accounts there. First of all, I'm not that young. I'm actually 46 years old. But, hey, that doesn't stop a lot of people from going to pubs. But I'm 46 years old. Also, <clears throat> I've got a young family. So, yeah, it's not very likely that I'm going to abandon them on a Saturday night to go on the tear. Even if I were a drinker, which I actually am not. Now, it's not that I don't drink at all, but my alcohol intake amounts to about a unit of alcohol. It's like one glass of wine or thereabouts. A month. So no, I'm not a heavy drinker. I'm not drawn to the pub scene in any way, shape or form. So the mental picture he drew up about me was completely wrong. But taking that into account, taking into account the mental picture that he might have drawn up about me, I can suddenly see why he thought that prediction was a good bet. Why he thought that that might be something that sounds very implausible, sounds very kind of random, but is actually quite likely to happen. Because if I was a young person, if I was a pub crawler, if I was somebody who likes to go into busy city centers heaving with activity, streets lined by pubs in which drunken people stagger about, suddenly the chances of seeing somebody trip are actually quite reasonable, quite plausible. This is something that you could see happening on a night on the tear. Now, 10 p.m. is a bit early for that to happen. But then again, so many people get drunk so early on nights like that. It is possible. And it is even more likely that somebody who does get as drunk as that, that early in the night, will end up stumbling and falling over their own feet. So, yeah. Not a bad guess to make. So I glibly pointed out to him that he got his um, assumptions about me completely arsewise. 
There was no response to that. As another challenge I threw at his feet, I told him that today, well that was yesterday, I performed a, an act of kindness and psychic, as he claimed he was, surely he could tell me what that was. And again, crickets, silence, no reply. You see, this sort of tactic, this sort of looking at somebody, building a mental picture about them, and then saying something that sounds very specific about that person, has a name. It's called cold reading. This is what psychics use, or so-called psychics, use to try and impress their audience. They say something that sounds very specific, but that is under the circumstances, under within the context of the mental picture they've built up about the person they're talking about, is something that is actually quite plausible. And add to that confirmation bias by the listener, the person who is at the receiving end of all these predictions and so on, that leads them to not even notice how they discard anything that is wrong about them, but that, that brings up as highly salient in the forefront of their mind something that sounds like it is personal. If it sounds like, hey, this applies to me, this is about me, and he's got it completely right, they, people who are listening to psychics and who are in the right frame of mind to be impressed by psychics, do latch on to those things. Do look at the correct predictions as being highly salient and important. And so the so-called psychic makes a mint out of the gullible. Now you know how they're playing the game. Are you still going to fall for it?